The microhematocrit is used for detecting anemia, polycythemia, hemodilution, or hemoconcentration. Don all necessary PPE, prepare materials, and assess specimen for quality. Mix specimen well and fill two microhematocrit tubes by capillary action. Tubes should be filled three-fourths their length. Seal one end of the microhematocrit tubes with clay sealant. Place filled and sealed microhematocrit tubes in microhematocrit centrifuge with clay ends pointing outwards. Note locations of tubes. Securely fasten the flat lid on top of the capillary tubes. This is an important step. Close the centrifuge top and secure the latch. Set timer for 5 minutes. I am going to demonstrate how to do the microhematocrit via microhematocrit centrifuge. I'm going to demonstrate this by using um, the hematocrit QC. They come in little vials like this. And when doing QC, you need to be sure to check the lot number and make sure that that matches your QC vial that you have. Um, with any specimen or QC, you need to make sure that it is well mixed. Sometimes the QC sticks to the bottom of the vial like this, so you need to make sure that it is fully resuspended. When doing the hematocrit QC, we always run it in duplicate. So first I'm going to get my plain capillary tubes. Now if you were doing this procedure via finger stick, you'd want to use heparinized capillary tubes. But since we're doing this procedure from QC or from a already anticoagulated specimen, we don't need additive inside the tube, so we just want the plane. Okay, so I'm doing it in duplicate. I have two capillary tubes here. And you're just going to insert your capillary tubes into your specimen and give it a little tilt and it should suck up by natural capillary action. We only want to fill them about three quarters, two thirds of the way full. Take it out of the vial, wipe it clean. Don't want any blood on the outside. And you're going to take your capillary tubes and tilt them so that the blood goes down to the opposite end, the non-bloody end. And just before, I'm going to do one at a time so I can show you. Just before it gets to the end, we're going to stick it into the clay. If you have a little bubble at the end, that's okay. okay. So this is the clay, and I usually stick it twice just for good measure. Okay. Demonstrate the other one. Tilt it so that the non-bloody end goes into the clay, because we don't want the clay getting all bloody. Okay. And now our tubes are ready to be spun down. Okay, So you see the clay over here in this end, and empty over in this end. And it, it doesn't really matter which side you put the clay in. Some tubes have this line as a guide. I put it in the other side, but doesn't really matter too much. Okay, so now these are going to go into the hematocrit centrifuge. And these centrifuges, we balance them just like any other centrifuge. So I'm putting my two tubes in it opposite sides balanced and with the clay to the outside. That's very important because whenever it spins, the blood is going to go to the sides. And if the clay is not there to protect it, blood's going to spill out all, the, all over the centrifuge. 
very important step is to put this lid back on before you spin. So be sure that this lid goes on over your specimens. And screw it down tight. Make sure it's flush and flat and the, the tubes are underneath. And you just close this. Make sure it clicks. And then there's a little knob down here. And you're going to spin it for five minutes. So you just turn it up for five minutes. After hematocrits have completed centrifugation, remove them from the centrifuge and read them with appropriate reading device. The microhematocrit is reported typically in percent. Males normal ranges range from 41.5 to 50.4 percent and females normal range is from 36 percent to 45 percent. Normal range ends will vary depending on the laboratory that you are employed at. In addition to common laboratory mistakes such as mislabeling and incompliance with the procedure, please be aware of these sources of errors for the hematocrit assay.